Hey, it's Hubbard. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Seriously, we're going to have a lot of fun. So many superstars and trivia games to play. Matthew McConaughey, Steve Buscemi, Jeff Goldblum, to name a few. Morgan Freeman, George Lucas, Ray Romano, Charlie Sheen, Colin Firth, Louis Black, President Joe Biden, Rachel Ray, Jay Leno, Robert Downey Jr., Tom Hanks, Ryan Reynolds, Adam Driver, that's what she said, Vince Vaughn, Seth Rogen, Christian Bale, Jeff Bridges, Anthony Bourdain, Barack Obama, Mark Wahlberg, John Lithgow, and Nicolas Cage. So it's going to be a star-studded event. Join me, Tony Danza, as we have some fun. How are you? I'm Tony Danza. And welcome back to the second annual Oscar Preview Countdown. We've got a lot of movies coming at you this year. And a lot of people that want to weigh in. So, thankfully, I've kept in touch with a lot of superstars. I know there was a lot of names there for me to pick up off the ground. But, well, you're just jealous that you don't have any cool fucking friends with nice houses and extra hot tubs. Joining me to my left to start off this uh, Oscar uh, countdown preview prediction show is uh, a two-time Academy Award winner, Tom Hanks. Tom, good to see you. (laughs) Well, thank you, Tony. Always. It's my favorite time of year. This is what, at my my house, obviously, we call the Academy Awards Christmas. (laughs) You know, you've won. Where do you keep your Oscars, Tom? Well, I, I keep one of them in a bathroom. Because when I shower, I like to look at it. And I'm sure you like to be watched while you shower. Oh, I do. Yeah. It's also a nanny cam. <laughs> In case someone breaks into the house, I've got a great house, but a terrible security system. And the other one, I, uh, I actually just, I, 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 it's like for me, it's, it's like the Stanley Cup. I let everyone who worked on the film take it home for a week. And just, you know, hang out with the family, take photos, tag me in them, at Tom Hanks. Has anyone ever tried to shove an Oscar inside of themselves? Uh, yes. Well, there was going to be a third installment. I read the script, passed immediately, on Human Centipede. And they, they said... I think we, I read for that. You, I, I think you did, too. You I, know who else read for that? My good friend and also Academy Award nominee or winner, I don't know, Robert De Niro is joining us. Robert? Hey, hey, Tony, Tony, how you doing? Oh, great. It's good to see you great again. I think the last here. time I saw you was at that, uh, I think, Buffalo Wild Wings in Tampa. That's right. You know, that was when I had, a, you know, I had a few too many wings. You know what happens. You know, I get really bloated. I start farting. Everybody leaves the room. But, hey, I had a place all to myself. It's fantastic, you know? Yeah, but if there's anybody that's going to fart and stink up a room, I, it, it, there's certain, we were just talking about this off air. Tom, who, you said there was two people who you wouldn't mind farted in your car and hotboxing it. Who was it again? Well, I, I said first off, I, hey, Bobby, how are you, buddy? Bobby's got two. Hey, Bobby's got two as well. Boy, am I the only guy here without an Academy Award? Well, you can take what? one and pass it to your family i'll send it your way okay. but, but i said we'll get you one we'll get you one bobby is a, is a, it's not a hot box when bobby does it i call it a raging bull <laughs> oh <laughs> hey you this son is... of a bitch you're fucking funny this guy you know he's he's a fucking comedian he does cartoons and shit this guy's a fucking star you ask him to do anything he can fucking do it he he, he could play a woman why haven't you played a fucking woman tommy what the I, fuck's I, well wrong can with i you? correct that i did in bosom buddies well, he was in bosom, oh, buddies. In bosom buddies. buddies by the way by the way rob watch your fucking language all right there's a kid show oh i'm sorry you know, you know I, no, I'm, I'm joking sorry. you can say anything you can honestly all this right is the one... fuck you tony there you, you go. fucking son of a bitch there's, look at you there's you the crazy old me. man i know and love now robert <laughs> you haven't done any animation work i know you were uh throwing props to uh to th that's over not here. true that's not true you remember shark tale oh you were in shark tale f- shark tale i was fucking it was it who was are fantastic. you again i was the shark 
Oh, that's right. I think I read for that. Will Smith and uh, Scorsese. We were in this fucking movie. We said, what's going to be better than Finding Nemo? Fish that stand on their legs and have big fucking lips. That's going to fucking beat any Nemo out there. And we fucking proved it because it was all mafia-based. It was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Those, Those underwater films always get me real hard. So, look, there's a lot of great films in 2021. I don't know how many you guys have seen. Uh, I haven't seen fucking one. I saw two. <laughs> what movies? You know, first of all, Tom, let's just go down your list of, uh, of credentials, okay? First of all, I thought Splash was a porno. But- well, you said you liked the underwater film. It's the closest I've been. I wanted to play Aquaman. Well, and what happened? Well, I, I worked out a lot, and I got there, and I realized they'd already wrapped the film, and it was Jason Momoa. <laughs> Apparently my well my Wi-Fi was out and I had an old connection and I a casting notice and I said well come on the kids love me and I'm really good with fish I am what the kids call the fish whisperer yeah I'm surprised you haven't done any sort of like Van de Kamp or Long John Silver's commercials probably because the money's not good Rob didn't you do a commercial for some sort of a chicken tender or butt plug you know they were probably filming me when I was, uh, you know, eating all those hot wings, and so they probably made it into a commercial. I have no fucking idea. I just roll into the room. They they throw me shit, and if the camera's on, the camera's on, and you know, I don't count checks anymore. Cause if the camera's does? on, the camera's on. You know who said that? Steve Buscemi, and he's also joining us here live via satellite. Steve hey. Buscemi. Steve, how are hey, you? Hey guys. Holy shit, man, to be around you Oscar winners, it's it's a privilege. Jesus Christ. I mean, well, I mean, Tony, sorry, you didn't win. Neither did I, but hey, we're in good company, right? Oh, we're in great company. And you know, you and I share something real similar, Steve. We've both screamed our own name when we've came. Oh, yeah, all, all the time. And I, I, I just go, Buscemi! Yeah, I read your blogs. Well, technically not my first name, you know, my last name. But uh, so, you know, I could be screaming at my father's name, which is weird, but... Hey, you know, at least we're related, you know? Steve, what, what gets you real fired up about Oscar season? I know Tom has a couple, so it's kind of been there, done that. But for you, have you even been to the award show? Do you have any backstage stories? Ever been at a urinal with, like, Cher or something? Well, I kind of just hang around the costume department because they're really good with, um, you know, dresses and shit. And a lot of girls, they're just changing all the time because they, they don't know if they wore the correct dress, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, about the Me Too movement stuff, um, I'd probably lose a lot of work saying anything I'm about to say. So I'm not going to say it, <laughs> but uh, let me just say I'm going to miss the costume department. <laughs> now, Tom, I know you're a big fashion guy. Well, huge. You're a big, uh, whoa, you can't say that. I know you, uh, I know you wear a lot of sport coats. You're a big shoe guy. Well, I have that whole line of big clothing from the movie Big. No shit. Yes, that you can uh, easily adjust to fit a child or an adult. Now, do you get pissed off when you see like a big and tall store? Are they like stealing your brand? A little. How about like Biggie Fries? Well, uh, well, I, I, yes. I'm angry whenever I don't get paid for the word big. Yeah, there's so much uh, out there that, you know, like when people say Bruce Springsteen's the boss, I go, I'll choke you out in this Panera. Who's the boss? What's that? Who's the boss? <laughs> you're looking at him. There you go. Thank you. Hey, this is why you're here, Tom. You know who else is here? One of my favorite actors of all time, Buscemi. I know you know this guy. I think you guys played poker or go fish or at some sort of Bukaki festival. But this Bukaki guy. Bukaki for sure. Bukaki. I knew it was something. I knew it was something French. Now. His, his poor name is Steve Bukaki. Steve Bukaki. Hey, Buscemi hey, and Bukaki. Hey, goddammit, why don't you have to release that information? By the so, way, uh, speaking uh, of release. Buscemi and Bukaki sound like beach cops from the 80s. We should make a show. Come on, Danza, let's do it. We can win an Emmy. We'll be that st- one, one, <laughs> one inch closer to an EGOT. <laughs> What's an EGOT? Can you say that? It, yeah, it's an Emmy. It's, oh, God, I don't know. An e- oh, oh. It's an it, escargot. It, it's an Emmy, it's a Grammy, it's a Tony, it's a and Emmy, it's an yeah, Oscar. Grammy. Okay, well, I already have a Tony. An album. That's what she said. All right, you know this guy, you love him. You've seen him in countless films like Couples Retreat and, um, and that one with John Favreau. Ladies and gentlemen, Vince Vaughn. Hey, my man, how are you? How are you guys? Great, great to see you, baby boy. Stevie, I haven't seen you in a long hey, time, and I like the energy, you, my man. How are you? Yeah, have Great, you guys man. met before? You look like you got some sort of uh, rapport that I, I'm picking up on. We're actually we're on a kickball team. No shit. Absolutely, yeah. He kicks my balls. <laughs> it's a little joke. No, I get it. He does kick my balls. Well, well he's the coach. Wait. You're the coach. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm also. I'm like a coach kind of player, and and I and I like to. I like to kind of rile up everybody right now. And I'm like, if you don't kick a home run right now, I'm gonna kick you in the balls. Yeah, that's I a famous like- Vince Vaughn saying. <laughs> 
you're a you're a quite the motivator, and most of your films have uh, a lot of big speeches, a lot of uh, you know, just you just you're always trying to get people fired up for the day. And I'm going to say something right now, and if I if I could take a quick second, right? Sure. Now, the energy in this room right now, and I know that a lot of people are moving forward and stuff like that. I'm saying like the three of us, like right here, sure. anything is possible. You know, what I'm saying like I read a book the other day. I don't even remember what book it was, but I'm going to tell you right now. I didn't think that I could get all the way through the book, but I fucking did it, my man. And I want to say you can do anything you want. And you can do anything that you want. And the listeners at home, I don't even know where your home is. I'd like to come over if I'm in the neighborhood. Like, I'll bring a pie. I never come empty-handed. You fucking know that about me. That's the energy that I bring to a fucking party. But I'm going to say right now, we got this energy together. We can move forward. I'm talking about Vaughn 2024. Holy shit. Man, you should win an Academy Award right now just for talking that fast. Holy <laughs> shit. You got fast my vote. Tucker. You got my heart. And you know what? You got my, you got my virginity. I'm going to, you know, because a lot of people, well, you got my butt virginity. Now, someone else joining us here who I know is a, a true fan of the movies who I think we, you know, we don't spend enough time recognizing, and I know Vince, he's one of your favorites, is the great Morgan Freeman. Now, Morgan, you played God. To me, that is, look, some people don't believe in him or her, but you played a version of God that was real sh schleek, chic or schleek, slick. I believe the term would be schleek. <laughs> Morgan, uh, what's your favorite thing about Oscar season? Well, I think the most favorite thing about Oscar season is the seats. They're damn comfortable. You know, I, at home, the wife, she prefers to sit on bar stools and solid wood. She likes antique furniture. But when I go to the theater and I feel a nice cushion, I like to be pushing my rear end on that. And once I sit down, well... At my age, I don't want to leave, if you know what I mean. I do, I do. And is that where the term more cushion for the pushing came from, just for Morgan Freeman getting comfy uh, Yes, it started futon? out just as a simple, you know, sincere term, but now it's turned into a sexualized version of that sincere, you know, moment in my life where I just put that cushion to my pushing on the behind. But now people say, hey, she got a big old badonga dong, I got to go hit that thing, and... A Morgan Freeman reference just goes out the window. Yeah, n <laughs> yeah. Now it's just about sorry, fat sorry, a little b. <laughs> now, <laughs> now it's just about yeah. fat asses, right? Yeah, Morgan. Well, that's great. Now, Vince, uh, have you? Uh, Morgan is one of our. I mean, look, I feel like you guys are gangsters in the film industry in your own right. But there's got to be something about each other that you've, you know, aspired to be, or that you've marvelled from afar from. You know, I I'm going to say something. He won an Academy Award for a little film called Invictus. You know, you know what I'm saying? A little film because it lives right. Was that the soccer movie? That, that yeah, that was the football movie. The That's football movie. I over played there. Nelson Mandela. That's right. I, I, Nelson Mandela would talk like this. It was hilarious because <laughs> that guy's voice is fucking crazy. Wait, so would you do an accent or was that was that? Yeah, I was doing uh, Nelson Mandela. He had, you know, he did his accent. He did, you know, it's nuts because the guy was in prison for so long. You think he'd pick up some type of street? accent or something you know because he turned to a thug being in prison that long sure but, sure dude sound like a, you know just some just a weirdo it was weird what but, sort of preparation hey. did you do for that role uh preparation h you know uh because uh, uh you know it's really difficult to um hold in all of that anger you know, uh, yeah i saw the that directors time. cut those shower scenes were crazy and matthew well, you were in uh, sorry vince you were in a um I, sorry look i it's i should probably tell you guys right now i have covid so, and every now and then, I forget who you are. I forget. Why do we kiss in the mouth when I got here? Why do we kiss on the mouth when I got here? Oh, because I, uh, I'm horny. Now, Morgan. You know, I got, hey, hold on. Oh, I, Steve. I just got to say something. Yeah. Um, you know, I've gotten more work because of coronavirus than any other time in my life. I think it's because I got to cover up my teeth. It's crazy. Yeah, I always wondered why, with all the money you made, you never got some sort of a mouth upgrade. Oh, I, I did. You should see my teeth before these. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I call you the male Jewel, and I don't think you should ever change that smile, baby. Oh, Jewel. Now that, now that is, she might be the first singer I've ever, you, you know, where I was like, I would, buy a, I would buy a blow up doll version of her, you know? And that's a compliment because I, you, as you know, I don't like to spend a lot of money. And you don't you don't there buy a lot is. of blow up dolls. You have a couple. I've got a couple, right? I've got one uh, based after Margaret Thatcher. Margaret Thatcher, of course, and then the other is um, A. O. Scott. Yep. So Vince, did you get that uh, Queen Latifah <laughs> one I sent? Because I got a couple in. The, 
Queen no, Latifah. I get, I get she has a blow up doll. The duplicates. Well, you know, Queen Latifah now, what is she? I'm she's not surprised. The equalizer. She's the equalizer. She's fucking, oh, yeah, damn. Yeah. Well, she got to a certain level. Bedroom. I actually wrote a script where I played a, a, a drag queen called Queef Latina. <laughs> <laughs> did you say Queef Latina? <laughs> I, uh, I absolutely did. And for is some that reason, her alter ego? Yes, Queef Latina. I was, under, I, was, uh, I was undercover. You know what I'm saying? Right now, that was kind of the energy that I would Vince bring. Vince Vaughn is Queef Latifah. <laughs> Queef wait, Latina. Wait, Queef but, Latina. Queef <laughs> Latina. How dare you not recognize? Wait, Morgan, will you please? Here, yeah. here, I'm gonna, here we go. We got some other friends joining us. Let's set up the trailer for the film Queef Latina starring Queen Latifah. Here we go. I'm going to narrate it. <clears throat> this summer, find out what happened. Let me start again. This summer. <laughs> Take two. This summer. You know, everything was going right in Glendale, California for Scarlett Robertson. She worked at that little bakery where they sold those donut things with the cake on top. Scarlett was played by Jeff Goldblum. Oh, gosh, I love working in this bakery, mm, uh, folding these uh, pieces of dough together, squishy, squishy, through my fingers. But Scarlett knew that she was destined for a bigger life right and her boss her boss played by charlie sheen always told her that she wasn't going to amount to jack shit you're never going to amount to jack shit now give me some of that shit and i'm going to jack it holy whoa and and also <laughs> but also her boyfriend played by seth rogan eh. was not the most supportive boyfriend even though he loved to spoil her with presents i i uh, i love you but i do not uh, believe in your dreams Oh, I'm so sad, boyfriend of mine. Oh, dear God, why don't you support me more? And that's when an agent showed up out of the blue when Scarlett was sitting on a bus stop waiting to die. And the agent came up to her, played by Barack Obama, and he said, Uh, let me be clear. Uh, there is a uh, lot of talent in this uh, great nation. But if I uh, am being honest, you are one of uh, the most uh, talented people I've ever seen in my life. Just then, Scarlett knew she needed to make a change, a career I change. I need to make a change. So she moved to Des Moines, Iowa, where she met superstar porn director, uh, <laughs> it's so dusty in here oh my gosh porn director oh my goodness gracious gosh is that you Played. jeff bridges uh i mean i'm i mean hey man <laughs> i'm uh I, listen man his, I, uh, his I gotta, name was will pounder uh, uh will pounder man <laughs> william poundington you know and uh you know i got a lot of dildos set up and we're just gonna go to town man she was the only latina in des moines iowa that day and she decided you know what maybe it's time i take a risk i really set my goals to be higher than they have been previously and that's when she got an unsuspecting phone call from her dad played by nicholas cage hi Oh. Oh, Daddy, oh, what's uh, what seems to be the matter? Mm? Oh, I uh, I know that. Oh, I I know that we've uh, oh, been yeah. away uh -huh. for uh, so long, but I uh, yes. I need to borrow some money. Uh -huh. Oh, good God. Money, 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 money. Well, then I'm going to have to work extra hard, Daddy. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to make sure you got the cash. She knew that money was going to start flowing because the gigs were starting to pile up. The and gigs are starting to pile up? <laughs> People were calling for this new superstar. They'd heard of Queen Latifah, but she needed something different, something that popped, something that told people who she was without From spilling From now the on, your name is Queef Latina. Even though she was Jewish, she felt like that name had a sweet ring to it. Hey, that's a beautiful name. Said Queef the Latina. Said the PA uh, pervert. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna subscribe to all your videos. I'm a billionaire. I'm gonna make you rich and famous. Jeff Bezos, played by Steve Buscemi. 
was a big oh. investor in Queef Latina's career. <laughs> and after that, I'm going to send you to the moon before Elon Musk. Elon Musk, played by John Lithgow. Um, I, I would say, listen, um, you know, uh, the thing is, uh, I want, I'm telling you, we're going to the moon, and um, I'm going to beat that bastard Bezos, because I think that uh, Tesla's better. Cut to the AVN Porn Awards. 25 years later, Queef Latina's been in the business, doing some things, and changing the game. I believed in that girl before anybody. And here she was wow. on stage, accepting the award. Well, actually uh -huh. being presented the award by Robert Downey Jr. You know, there's a lot of people in film, obviously. There's people in movies, there's people in uh, te television shows, cartoons, but there's people that transcend the sport, transcend the game, and I think uh, Queef Latina is that person that did that, but also, look, she did some things that w were questionable, obviously. Uh, should she win Best Anal tonight? That's neither here nor there. I think she should. I think, look, taking anything in your butt, and I've said this before, I'll say it again, is a big risk, but she has a big hole. So, that being said, the winner for Best Anal Scene goes to, and it was at that moment she knew if I don't win, it was all a waste. Luckily, luckily, her mom, played by Christian Bale, screamed that thing that always gave her that bit of confidence she needed. You can do this! Oh, thank you, Mama. Thank you. And the winner for best anal scene goes to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's... Well, good thing I put all my money on black. Don't cancel me. Queef Latina... Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank my mom. Uh, I want to thank my, um, uh, I want to thank uh, my, my, my agent. And, uh, oh, good God. And my little, oh, oh, please don't, 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 don't play me off. No. Oh. Queef Latina coming this fall to Netflix. <laughs> Wow, that was great, guys. Wow, that was that one was of the, the shortest trailers I've ever heard. That was almost the, <laughs> the only thing it needed was the credits. I would think that was, <laughs> that was pretty much the movie. Now, Tom, I know I saw you sitting there on the sidelines getting real thirsty, chomping at the bit, going, well, yes. man, I, I would love to play a part like that. Are there certain parts, and I want to know this from you, Tom, and, and Ray Romano, comedian, now actor extraordinaire from Men of hey, a Certain hey, Age. Hey. Are there parts that you guys want to play that you haven't played? Are there people you want to work with you haven't worked with? Uh, yes. I, I like, I'd like to play MLK. Martin Luther King? Uh, no. Another guy who was MLK that I grew up with, who was my hero. Um, who else has MLK? Uh, oh, Martin Luther. Martin Landau. <laughs> I'd love to play Martin Landau. Martin now, Landau King? Now that hey, I could see. Yeah, that'd be great. You, 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 you could... You, 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 yeah, we'll come back to you, Ray. Now, I think that well, the, well, you could play Milton Bradley, the game board guy. Well, the, the game I, show I, guy. I'd yeah. like to play the Parker Brothers. I could play I could play two of me. Now, I would love to see a movie with Ray Romano and Tom Hanks playing the Parker oh, Brothers. Oh, I'd love that. I yeah. love that. Because they created a whole bunch of... Didn't they make Parcheesi and Guess Who and... Yeah, Twister, on, Monopoly. And, yeah. and at the and, and I think the last thing is we get into a huge fight. Obviously, a huge fight. Oh, big description. A big description. Yeah. And then at the end, when we come together, we just look at each other and say sorry. And then it cuts to the game. Now, do you think there was ever a version of Twister that was called Titty Twister? Yeah. I hope so. I, yeah, I that's the game I play all the time, but usually with myself. You know, I just I put the little things on and I spin them. And they, 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 you know, instead of choosing what color you go on, they just twist your nipples. Yeah, Ray, you strike me as a guy with a big nipple fetish. Is that true? Well, I have big nipples, so you that's do. probably the reason. Yeah. yeah, yeah there should be a category abnormal. for that. There should be a category for comedy, and there should be a category for nipple stuff. I want to say something about a titty twister. Sure. Well, the game is like Twister, but it's also if you add in the game operation. That would be <laughs> titty twister. <laughs> Uh, is there is there one thing about this slate of movies? And I want to go through now the, the picks and the Oh, that's right. This is about the Oscars. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Because, look, I think this is a year where you go, we need award shows more than ever, you know? 
And, uh, I mean, you know, I don't want to speak for you, Jason Statham, but I know that you attend these award shows for the after parties. Yeah, well, number one, thanks for having me out, you know what I mean? So, I, I literally go for, I'm security at all of these events. Yeah. People don't know this. Then I got my own, I'm a bathroom attendant, which is my next movie, actually. Is a guy. Who's, that I would watch. Yeah, who starts out, he's, uh, you know, ex-Navy SEAL, Black Ops, obviously. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm in the bathroom, you know, just sort of like, hey, you want some binocca? Can I get you some condoms? Well, here, let me see that scene played out. Ian McKellen, now, you, you're you a guy that pees a lot. I know in your old age, what are you, 105? Uh, I, 106, actually. Oh, wait, so yes. let's say you're in the bathroom and Statham's the, the bathroom attendant, all right? This, this is the opening scene for bathroom attendant. You come in and you start I'm taking a pee. zip, wang, out, <laughs> drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. I always narrate when I'm urinating. Uh, it's a lovely, uh, lovely time, sir. Governor, you want, uh, can I get you a towel or something down there? You can get me a towel and you can get me a mint to put <laughs> in between your sweet lips. I think, uh, I know what you're talking about. I got that package for you. I'm, I've, I've got, got some... a package too. <laughs> Do you want to unwrap it? Wait a minute. You're not the guy. Wait a minute. Is this not the club? <laughs> I was supposed to meet a guy named Edgar. What's your name? I was supposed to meet a guy named Sweetballs. Wait a minute. I think we've been set up. we got to get out of here. You and me, let's make it out through the emergency exit. Hurry! We must fly! Holy shit, I would watch the fuck out of that. Uh, uh, I'm <laughs> telling you, this movie... Uh, this Statham, all, you, know, are yeah, one, you are yeah. one of those guys, yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong, who just... Have, has it? You just must have just just pussy falling out of your uh, falling out of your cargo shorts. Oh yeah. Well, number one, obviously, I have my own line of cargo shorts. You know, and uh, you're not you, a cargo short guy, huh? No, I am. I have my own line of them. Is what I'm trying Do to say. Do you really? Yeah, absolutely. Do you know what I mean? So stay from cargo shorts. You know, you're gonna get a kick because they get a lot of room. Because you know, I, I always solve problems with two ways, right? Yeah. With the punching, obviously. Yep. Or the kicking. Yep. You know? So you got you got to have pants on, you know, because you got to be able to lift your leg high enough. Oh yeah, you got more freedom. I feel like in cargo exactly. shorts. Exactly. And uh, you know what my cargo shorts are called? Go and commando. Now that see now that's how you see Ian and I know like Ian. I love anyone in commando. Well, you I go, I've been to many a strip clubs. Are they transparent cargo shorts by any chance? No, because then they would know what you were packing. Well, that's what I want to know. Ian, are I you want... a sweatpants or a cargo short guy at the strip club? Mm, sweaties. I wear my sweats all the time. In fact, I wear double sweats, so I sweat upon sweat. So the movies that <laughs> that are uh, coming at us uh, this year have uh, have really been, uh, you know, in a year where things got dicey, right? I know, uh, Sir McKellen, you uh, spent most of the quarantine in uh, in a cottage in an in Antarctica, uh, which seemed like an odd choice, but uh, well, at the time it was just for a vacation, you know what I mean? Those for vacation, yeah. Bastards. Yeah, they said, hey, guess what? We're in lockdown. And I said, fuck. Out of all the places in the world to be, I'm down in freezing Antarctica. Well, well it turns out it was quite fun. There were lots of penguins down there. Oh, penguins. Shit, you know, I do a lot of stuff with penguins. Did they come up to you and uh, ask you to rub their bellies? Yeah. Well, they didn't ask me to rub any bellies, you fucking idiot. They don't speak English. Yeah, Morgan, yeah. you know how many penguins there are in the universe, don't you? The universe holds over 450 trillion penguins. That seems they don't all live on Earth. I'm not going to lie. There's a that shit seems... ton of them on Venus. That seems high. That seems a little bit inaccurate. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know how to count birds, because obviously a, a lot of them are dying and being born. I'm, you know, in the bird game, I breed them. Listen, when you play God, a lot of times it's like joining the White House. You just learn a lot of secrets. And, well, when you play God, you learn that there's a lot of shit that mortal men don't know about. So for best picture, we've got The Father, Judas and the Black Messiah, Mank, and Minari. Oh, and No Man's Land and Promising Young Woman, Sound of Metal, and The Trial of the Chicago 7. Now, I don't know if you guys know what any of these movies are, but I'd like to go through is it. The, uh, is the Sound of Metal about metal? Like like actual iron and, you know, like 
aluminum and tin and That's stuff being scraped. Great question, I, 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 can't, I don't like nails on chalkboard and shit like that. I, 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 I couldn't handle a movie like that. Yeah, man. I mean, the sound of metal, it sounds like a podcast I'd turn off. Yeah, I mean, well, that yeah, that is. If it was just a, a bunch of banging and, yeah, and screeching and scratching, yeah, I'm uh, I'm not uh, I'm not down with that one, man. I am not down with that one. Well, that's the name of your podcast. Uh, I'm not down with that, yeah, Jeff Bridges. Absolutely. And, well, I call out other podcasts that I'm not down with. Right. You just basically have a list of podcasts you don't like, and you yeah. say you you name them and. Uh, and then you and say, that's all I do. I don't really talk about them, man. I, I, I sort of, you know, I, I pick them out. I don't really give a description. I just say, sure. hey, man, I'm not down with this one. And your impact has truly become apparent because uh, a couple, Rachel Ray's Bolognese uh, podcast went under. Because- you know, and that was a mistake, man, because I... <laughs> I'm a fan, man, and I gotta say that I am a fan of Rachel Ray, man. She's so sweet, and nobody makes, uh, you know, chocolate dumplings like she does. Hey, so I gotta give a shout on, out to Rachel Ray. Dumps. The dude apologizes, man. Yeah, you've, uh, what's that, Ray Romano? You also. I, I was gonna say, no one makes chocolate dumps like Morgan, but, you know, because I'm a comedian, I make jokes, but I didn't get to interject. Cause, hey, I'm trying to do comedy. No, well, you've been doing comedy, Ray. You're one of the greats. You know David Duchovny. Now, look, there's... Um, I saw you, by the way, at David Duchovny's comedy club, Duchovny's, yeah, in 87. Duchovny's. Oh, that was one of the first... 87, yeah, yeah. That was a whole blackout period. I, me and Seinfeld, we were doing a lot of crazy shit. You know, everyone thought it was uh, Kinnison and Farley, but no, it was us. Yes, it was us. It's a reason why we both sound weird. There's a lot of... <laughs> Going on, you know what I mean? Come on. What does Brad Garrett smell like? He smells like olive oil. Yeah. I uh, I do smell like olive oil. Brad Garrett? Well, oh, well, well. shit. My, uh, I, was, I owe uh, Brad money. Why didn't you fucking <laughs> tell me? I'm actually How working. Uh, I'm working security here at the building. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I am. Uh, Hello, Raymond. How are you, buddy? Hey, buddy boy. Hey, 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 how you doing? permanently on the floor. They're just dragging. You heard a knuckle draggers. He's a ball dragger. That's why he sounds the way he sounds. You know, you two are uh, probably in the top ten of iconic duos. I mean, we're talking Bert and Ernie, Donald and Melania, um, you know, Bonnie and... Hey, what and about me and Jeff Bridges? We were great. Man, uh, Buscemi and Bridges, yeah. Man. We were the... I mean, honestly, brother, uh, we, you know, the fact that Buscemi and I don't have a podcast, man... Is well, <laughs> Buscemi had a podcast, but what'd you do to it? Well, it wasn't that, man. There were, <laughs> they sounded a lot like another one, man. A lot of people's podcasts sound the same, brother. I, uh, Steve, I, 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 listen, listen, man, I've apologized many times. You know I don't get a lot of work, and now I'm fucked because of you. Well, yeah, this guy's out on the street giving bastard. hand jobs for tuna casseroles. Listen, I said you. I said come over and clean my pool. Like I, I'm trying to give you jobs, man. I said yeah, we should do jobs, true grit too. Jobs are one thing; getting paid is another. And Jesus well, I, I'm waiting for my stimmy check, man. Well, you know who oh. is waiting for a stimmy check? The residuals, the actors in the Best Picture nominees. And let's go through them again. And I, and I would like to know from each of you if you've seen the movie, and if not, tell me what you think it's about. All right. The Father. Jeff? Um, I, I would say it's about, you know, maybe maybe Bo Bridges or, or Lloyd Bridges. Maybe is it my father? Is this one about my father? It, 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 it is not, but now that I'm hearing that idea, that's the movie I would like to see. Maybe the star of the film, Anthony Hopkins, can tell us what the movie's about. Well, um, to tell you the truth, I don't quite remember. You know, the, the film is all about uh, dementia and uh, all those uh, problems that the elderly people have. And it's a whirlwind of uh, uh, elderly abuse, and uh, it's very depressing. So um, I try to forget things uh, that involve me in uh, anything. But uh, I, when I read the script originally, I thought the, um, the, uh, the film was about me being Darth Vader, the father. You know. Oh yeah! Yes. No, and I said, wow, that really here's an epic. Here's an epic <laughs> film, you know, the bi- biopic of Lord Vader, yeah, the father. Man, I I actually read for uh, for for Skywalker, man. Did you really? Yeah, man. Yeah, I read for Chewbacca, but you know that was it was a different time when they needed diversity. What was that I read for like? Princess Leia. You read, just, Morgan Freeman yeah. read for Princess Leia? What? They said my voice was too high. I, I was still just a little teenager. Yeah, it's also like, I don't know, you, you know, you're a, 
you know, Carrie Fisher, you know, that, let's be honest, there's not, not a lot of people uh, playing with themselves to the uh, Morgan Freeman headshots. And, and maybe I'm yeah, just talking, no, you know, to for myself some only. I my own flavor in there, and they, they don't like when you bring out the little sandworm, you know what I mean? No, I don't. <laughs> it was a reference to Dune, which was... Oh, I thought it was a reference to the Sarlacc pit in the, in the, in the Jedi, man. I haven't yeah. seen Star Wars. Oh, you gotta see it, man. You know, it's like Iraq, but in space. <laughs> Is that how it was pitched? Well, I don't listen. It was probably pitched as Vietnam in space, man. But I don't. Have you guys Dude, seen Judas? Done so many drugs to make movies like that. Hey, Charlie Sheen, have you seen Judas and the Black Messiah? It's another uh, nominee no, for Best Picture. No, but I've picture. seen fucking Judas sitting across from me right now. Fucking Tony Danza, my fucking Judas, you motherfucker. Hey, you so, sold me out. You know, we you are. Fucking sold me out. How did I sell you out? Fuck you. Look, we you are both. sold me out. Oh, suck a dick. Look, you and I have kind of held down. The 80s and 90s for television. Yeah, Two and a half men, yeah. who's the boss taxi? These are, we're talking about shows that have, I mean, you know, you tell me. It's like, uh, you know, how many, you know, cotton candy machines can you fit in your closet right now? I don't know how many I can fit in my closet, but I got a couple I can fit up my ass. You know, you do a lot of blow, you can, you can expand a lot, of, a lot of parts of your body. It's fucking crazy, dude. Charlie, have you seen the movie Mank or Minari? No, but I've met a man named Hank. He's fucking amazing. This guy gave me a lot of access to a lot of great experiences. And holy shit, if you want to expand your mind, you got to meet Hank. He's fucking amazing, dude. He lives up in the valley. <laughs> shit, dude, you just reminded me. I got to go call him. Uh, now, Jeff, have you seen Promising Young Woman or Nomadland? And if not, do you know what they're about? Uh, those other podcasts I've panned? Charlie, Sound of Metal is also a Best Picture nominee. What do you think it's about? Holy shit, dude. Sound of metal. Let me, let me, let me, let me just spread this out. Sound. Sound. Of. Of. A, of. Of. Is it? Maybe it's a French film? Sound of metal. Sound of metal. Maybe metal's the name of like a dog or something. And the sound is the bark he makes as he's being abused by his owner. Holy shit. That movie sounds fucking depressing. Give that the Academy Award. Nice. Boy, I, you know, they should really ask you to host one year. You've got... Um... Well, you got that winning attitude. Oh, yeah, of course. I come out there, fuck you, Billy Crystal, Steve Martin, and all you other motherfuckers who tried to host. I am Charlie fucking Shane. I may not be winning an award, but I am always winning because I got tiger blood in my veins. And can you imagine I'm still using this fucking reference from, what, 2006? Fuck yeah! Well, Charlie, you know, I don't want to knock you for that tiger blood, uh, you know, debacle because, Adam Driver, you actually were the first one to make tiger blood available at your uh, bed and breakfast that you run in, uh, in Martha's Vineyard. Yes, I, um, I, 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 I make it, my wife and I, uh, we're very, very, um, you know, just small uh, sort of- uh, What are you trying uh, to say? People that, that okay. just uh, tiger blood yep. is very, uh, is very good it. For, 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 uh, for, for, for the, the, the focus. You fucking spit it out, you fucking freak the hell's wrong with this. All right, this. Robert, it's the first time on the mic. Listen, I, I didn't- hey, fucking Afghanistan, hey, hey, shut you the can't fuck fucking up. talk. Hey, shut Sorry, the fuck up. Motherfucker. Hey, it's fine. I didn't get a lot of uh, sleep last night. I, 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 I apologize. Why do you always Nobody sound like you're hurt? Nobody got fucking Hey, Robert, oh, shut the fuck up. Mr. Sleep. De Niro, why do you always sound like you're, you're, you're struggling to rehearse for your Haftorah portion? Uh, well, because um, I don't, um, uh, I'm, I wasn't sh uh, really, um, I, I haven't had coffee, and I need um, coffee before I uh, sort of uh, talk to people, because I'm more of Are an introvert. Are you listening to this guy? He needs fucking coffee? He's fucking six foot two. What the fuck's wrong with you, fucking what? coffee? Wait, wait, wait. You're a fucking wait. animal sticking up your ass. Hold on. Hold on. What does my height have to do with communicating with people? Are you, are you an right, imbecile? Right, right. You're getting these fucking roles, these girls, these little tweens. Are they you, see, listen, they say, listen, listen to De Niro. It reminds me of my father. I want to fuck him. I'm going to see his movie. That's the only fucking reason. The fuck's wrong with you? You look like fucking Snape from Harry Potter. That's the only fucking reason, you fucking fuck. I... I respect you very much, Mr. De Niro, but you're giving me anxiety right now, and I Just have to go outside. Just call me taxi driver. Call me fucking taxi driver, because that's the only thing I remember I was in.
All right, all right, all right. All right. Sorry about that, Mr. Driver. You know, you know, I invited you on the show, and <clears throat> you know, no, I'm, I'm very, I'm a huge fan of, um, of, of, of who's the boss. I always thought that, uh, Tony was the boss. Just to, to clear. Well, that, I appreciate you know. that. And look, there's a lot of people that there's a lot of straight men who wouldn't uh, take the role of a. Of yeah, a I'm straight. Of a, ma- <laughs> of a of a maid. On TV, you know, it's a it's a it's a job uh, that not a lot of men take on. So already, I was ahead of my time. You know, this is the this is the late '80s we're talking about. I'm a man vacuuming a house. I mean, you're you are the um, the Harriet Tubman of that profession. Thank you, thank you. Hey guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. I know some of you guys are sleeping on some saggy ass, old, piece of shit, fart filled mattresses at night. And guess what? You deserve better than that. So give yourself an upgrade. Helix mattress is the best mattress on the planet. Why do I know that? Because I sleep on one. They gave me one. I love it. They support the pod, so we support them back. Helix Sleep has a quiz, right? This is how you know they're legit. It takes two minutes. Everyone else is like five to 35 hours. This quiz is two minutes long, and when you complete it, they match your body type and your sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. And that's very important, that's special, because you don't want a mattress that's made for someone else. You want one made for you that's soft, medium, and firm, which are all the types of mattresses they have. They even have mattresses that are great cooling you down if you sleep hot, which I do. I've always slept hot. I wake up with meat sweats, beet sweats, uh, feet sweats, <laughs> all the sweats, and uh, and it sucks. But the, the mattress I got cools my body and my taint down so I can wake up feeling refreshed and rested. I sleep on my side, my stomach, and my back a lot. I move around a lot. So the mattress they hook me up with has really uh, been incredible. It's the King Cali, and, uh, and I couldn't have asked for a better place to rest on. If you're looking for a mattress right now, which I know we all are, we're all looking to upgrade our sleep situation, take the quiz. It takes two minutes. Order the mattress you're matched to, and the mattress will come right to your door, shipped for free, which is the best part, because shipping can add up. You don't ever want to go to the mattress store again, and we order everything from our homes now. We watch things from our homes. There's no reason to leave, and the quarantine probably added to that. Uh, You get accustomed and conditioned to not having to go to places to get your shit. And who wants to haul a giant-ass mattress home? No one's got a fucking two-by-four truck. Just go to helix.com slash about. Take that two-minute quiz. They'll match you to a customized mattress. They'll give you the best sleep of your life. They also have a 10-year warranty, and you can try it out for 100 nights risk-free. If you don't like it, they'll come pick it up. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattresses and two free pillows for my listeners. If you go to helixsleep.com slash about, that's helixsleep.com slash about for up to $200 off and two free pillows. So do it. Start sleeping better because you deserve it. And now back to the episode. So best actor. There's a lot of characters in this one. Chadwick Boseman probably leading the charge. Uh, I know Mark Wahlberg, you and Chadwick met on some FUBU commercial. Yeah, you know, I was always a, I was always a fan. A big fan. I think he's really a, he was a fantastic actor and a great loss for the community. Sure, sure. Yeah, he really uh, had that extra thing, right? That thing that, um, I mean, shit, I don't know. Like, Christopher Waltz always, what, what, what is that thing you said that actors need? Like, they need that one. Well, I mean, they need a Quentin Tarantino, I have to say. That's really the only way you're going to get anything in this world, and especially if you're in Hollywood and you're looking to have any success. You need to have someone like Quentin Tarantino to give you that push so that you can win two Academy Awards back-to-back. Yeah, boy, you sound like Count Chocula. Just so... I would love to play Count Chocula. It is a cereal I grew up eating as a child, and... And now to play him with the fangs and the chocolate wings and all this stuff, it would be a dream come true because I think I deserve a third Oscar. Gary Oldman's also up for Manx, Stephen Yen for Maneri, uh, and of course Anthony Hopkins for The Father. Now, Anthony, this will be your second win, I believe. Has he won one before? Vince? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Jeff, go ahead. No, no, no. I, if you want to talk to me, my man, I'm right here. I, I'm sorry about that. I was taking a call. I got this Bitcoin thing going on. I'm going to tell you about it later. Are it's you an NFT Bitcoin guy? <laughs> when am I not, my man? When am I not? I just sold that laugh as an NFT. I just sold that laugh <laughs> as an NFT. And I'm going to say something right now about he won one for Silence of the Lambs. He won one for Silence of the Lambs. And I was a huge fan of that film. And I like, I, I want Buffalo Bill, put the lotion in the basket. I, I read for the part, put the lotion in the basket. Put the lotion in the fucking basket, you know? Put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> the lotion in the basket. It was an honor to play that role because really, I was, that was the closest role to playing to myself that I ever performed. You know, of course, everyone was afraid of me on set, but I was very much not in character. I simply stared at this camera as I stare into the eyes of my wife, lover, or even my pet rat. And I just do what I do. They gave me the award simply to keep me away. I do what I do. That sounds like a line from Moraney's Black Bottom, which Viola Davis is up for best actress. Sorry, did you just say Moraney? <laughs> Ma, Ma Rainey? Sorry, did you say Black Bottom? <laughs> I, I knew a, I knew a Moraney. We went to college together, Black man. Black Bottom. Uh, no, how I do you pronounce it? Ma Rainey? No, I mean, the film, I don't know. I didn't, I, I thought it was a guy, man, but I think it's Ma Rainey. But if it's Ma Rainey, tell him I say hi because <laughs> I know him. There's also uh, Andrew Day from the United States versus Billie Holiday, uh, Vanessa Kirby for Pieces of a Woman, you know, and then Frances McDermott, who we've seen. She's been in everything. She's in No Man Land. I think that's about like a, a disgruntled uh, barista who like kills a. Kills hey, a that's horse. my friend from Fargo. Hi, Frances McDermott. Well, no, she's not here, but but oh. I'm saying she's nominated. Can Steve. you tell her I I I Wait, did I'd you say Frances McDermott? I think it's Frances McDormand. Oh, what did I say? Oh, maybe oh, that's Dylan, why she I always get Dylan McDermott and and, and, Dur and Dermot Mulroney. Dermot Mulroney and Frances McDermott and 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 and, and Frank Mulroney are all the same person. <laughs> it, Frank Mulroney is Dylan McDermott is. Frances McDermott is Kaiser Shose. We'll be right back. No, I, I do think, though, she's a front runner unless Carrie Mulligan uh, gets a hole in one. Pulls a Mulligan. For, for Promising Young Woman. Have you seen that? What Holy would, fuck, yeah, I saw that movie. That Charlie like Sheen, what, would be a, what, would, what makes a, a young woman promising in your eyes? A promising young woman is a woman who fucking knows how to give as well as take. Holy shit. If you watch a movie like that, you fucking got to turn me on more than anything. I mean, she was fucking like threatening people and shit. You know, you play the cool guy who's just taking her out, but she's like fucking, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. And I'm like, fuck yeah, fucking give it to me. Fuck yeah, fuck, <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck yeah. Now, best supporting actor is a, is a category where I go, you know, there's too many home run hitters here. We got Sasha Baron Cohen for The Trial of the Chicago 7. Daniel Kaluuya. Hey, a comedian for an Academy Award. It's, it's not supposed to happen. Come on. It's not, no. and that's why it's... No. They always, oh. but they always have us say as uh, as supporting, right? Yeah, whenever the lead, whenever the lead main guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have won for that, you know, the mammoth. They played Nice Age, but they said no. You're a cartoon. You can't, can't do that. And they credited me as Kermit, not as Ray Romano. The fuck is wrong with the Academy? Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with the Academy. They never, uh, they never. Um, they never honored my film, the Disney film from 1994, Garage Pick and Field Goal Kick in Philadelphia Phenom, Phenomenon. Um, did you guys ever see that? I played for the Eagles. I was a garbage man. Then I became a kicker for the Eagles. I thought that was a documentary. Fuck you. All right, so I want to do some quick movie trivia just to take a break. First of all, Hanks. I want to go Hanks versus... Joe Biden. President Joe Biden, thank you for zooming in. I know you've got a busy schedule of Here's the deal. thinking. and I believe our country's in a great state of change. And I believe that being here right now on this platform with you, young people, you are the change that this American country needs. I believe. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I dream about it every night and day. Mr. President, what was the name of the? Wings, <laughs> what was the fly away. Mr. President, what was the name of the rabbit in the magic hat in Frosty the Snowman? <laughs> That'd be Bugs Bunny, and here's the deal: Bugs Bunny played a lot of parts. He played not only a, a great 
supporter of the United States. A lot of those <laughs> propaganda films, you watch him. He talks about STDs. He talks about the German Nazis. I don't think that was him. Here's the deal. <laughs> folks, folks, here's the deal. <laughs> this is not hyperbole, by the way. I believe that our country can move forward with not just bunnies and rabbits, but hamsters as well. All right, Barack, do you have any... Just meant but, but Barack, do you want to say something to your uh, your, your protege? Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, I, uh, well, uh, I Barack, have to say, uh, how, how are you? How are you, buddy? How are you? Uh, uh, you never return my calls. Uh, well, I uh, played basketball two, three times with you, and he turns around, and doesn't 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 return my calls. That's okay. I understand. He's got a wife and kids. That's cool. <laughs> I'm hip. Uh, Joe, uh, well, uh, listen, I I've got the Joey, uh, the Joey phone. Remember, I, I gave you that phone. It was full of candy, and that was That's for right. you. Skittles. Uh, your Skittles favorites. I had, I had everybody. Uh, you just, I just gave you the red ones. I uh, know those are your favorite. I love red. Let me tell you why. Because I'm like a bull. You wave red in front of my face, I go full steam is this guy uh, this guy is uh, the fast and furious uh, there's no off button with this guy uh, you, you are down uh, you are the rock uh, if i've ever seen it now i want to know the rock hey joe shut up shut shut the fuck up for a second so uh, i i want to do a quick thing before we uh get to our last few categories movie trivia there's so many facts and figures to to memorize and to know and i've played my fair share of movie trivia at the at the bars you know, cl close it down where people are like, hey, you're going to have to start working here or, uh, or drink more. And then I drink more, I drive home. A and look, I think there's a lot of things that we don't remember from the films we love. So that's what movie trivia is for. So I want to know between the two of you and uh, the winner of this trivia game is going to get a gift certificate to Islands. Islands Restaurant, where we've got burgers and shakes and Diet Pepsi, just like the Islands do. Islands. Who starred as Kevin McAllister in Home Alone? Well, are you? Uh, well, um, is it is it me? I'm, I mean, I mean, do no, I, it wasn't you. Hanks. No, no, no. Saying, I, you, is it my turn? Oh, your turn. Yeah, go for it. Well, I would say, oh, uh, Macaulay Culkin. That is correct. One point to President. This fucking guy's cheating. I know he's fucking cheating. He's got an iPad or a phone or some shit. He's looking this up. This motherfucker. He's using fucking. He's using Siri. Look at him. Look at his fucking face. He's he's cheating. This is no fuck. No one would know that information. How would you know that information? The movie's thirty years old. Well, what the I, fuck is I, I I was I was uh, I gotta step in here real quickly. I I, I was neighbors with uh, Macaulay Culkin. For about 10 years. No shit. I'm best friends with fucking Joe Pesci. He would never tell me that the star of this movie is some guy named Macaulay Culkin. What no, the but fuck he, he, Well, he was the star of, of that movie. <laughs> I mean, if not. No. Mr. Mr. Biden, uh, this question goes for you. It's a, in, a wonder, in a wonderful life, and it's been a wonderful life for you. How old are you now? Listen, here's the deal. Jesus fucking Age Christ. Let's go back to... No, no, country. hey, hey, shut up. Generations of people are moving together <sighs> as one. All right. And I believe if we come together, yep. not only as elderly people, but as newborn people. Joe, Babies? you're like you're like if an hourglass yes. was a person. <laughs> okay, the sands yes, of yeah. time. Uh, I think you know, we got you. Wrong. He's not you're wrong. He's not wrong. We got wrong, you. And we love you. And I couldn't be more proud of my Uncle Joe. Here's the deal. No. Uncle Buck was a great movie. Hey. I love uh, John Candy. He was in I that. I love candy. Uh, I love no. the phone that was filled with candy. Everybody loves I'm candy. some right now. In fact, my teeth are, are stained red from the from the, the food coloring. Joe, which Christmas movie features Arnold Schwarzenegger desperately trying to get an action figure on Christmas Eve as a gift for his son? Here's the deal. Well, uh, fuck, God are damn it! Aware that Arnold Schwarzenegger was not only a great American citizen, he came from another country, he came from a difficult background. Sure. And he he strived for better. He became governor of California. Yeah, right. Governators is what they call him. And I believe that's the name of that movie, The Governor. Uh, Joe, uh, what, that's not our final answer. Uh, hold on. That's not our final answer. Barack, do you have a rebuttal on that? Uh, well, I'm, I'm always uh, Team Biden. And I think we're going to go with, Joey, uh, let me, I got this one, buddy. Uh, jingle uh, all the way. 
Oh, hold on a second. That that's is correct. A song. Joe? No, that's not a that's song. That's the name of the movie, bells, Joe. Jingle bells, Jingle bells. No. Uh, Joe? Jingle all the way. Joe, right where's there. the chew toy I got you? Joe, where's Joe, that chew take toy? take that bone that Barack sent you. Come on. Put it in your mouth. Where is it? Find it. Find it. There's a, there's a surprise inside. It. There it Listen, there it Joe. Is. Joe, there's a surprise Joe, uh, inside yeah, the chew, chew toy. Chew on it. Chew on it. Go to your bed. Well, that's a fake chew, Joe. Hey, Joe, go to your bed. Go to your bed. Go to your bed, Joe. Lay down. Sleepy Joe. There you go. There you go. Uh, I'm a fan, obviously, but we're going to go with we're, final answer. Final answer, uh, jingle, jingle all the way, way, and that is correct. Well, that's two points for Barack Obama. Joe Biden still trailing, uh, but with two more well, questions. I, I, well, Tom Hanks got that first one. Oh, that's right. Hanks did, yeah. <laughs> so, oh, so we're he, having fun. Hanks and Obama. And, and, and we're together, right? Team Buscemi and Hanks, right? Well, that's, always. That's yes, Steve Buscemi, is one of my idols, is here. I can't believe he knows my name. Now, is uh, this next question is going to – I want to open this up to the uh, peanut gallery. This, what, are the, what were the dying words of Charles Foster Kane in Citizen Kane? I want to start with Matthew McConaughey. Hey, guys, let me tell you something. When you're dying, you got a lot of things that you want to say. you got a lot of things you want to get off your chest. I okay, let's – The last thing he <laughs> said was, get me a Foster's, I'm referring to the beer. It's Australian for beer. But they say Australian for beer. If you watch the commercials, they're like, Foster's, it's Australian for beer. Seth Rogen, I know you've, yeah, yeah, Matt, Matt, I just, you know, smoke more peyote. So, Seth, uh, you. <laughs> I will, I will, I will. Okay, now, Seth, who do you think the, what, what was the last thing that, um, that was said by Foster Kane, Charles Foster Kane and Citizen Kane? Uh, I, uh, I will, I, I, you know, I'm sorry, real quick. I, uh, did somebody, uh, I, uh, did somebody say peyote? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I did. I, McConaughey's uh, got that sweet, sweet peyote. I, uh, a lot of people think, a lot of people think that I'm exclusively a weed guy, but I also love peyote. I am such a fan. <laughs> uh, but the answer. What do you love about it? Uh, I love that it's like, it reminds me of the word coyote, but it's not. It's like its yeah, own thing. Yeah, man. It reminds me of Peter Coyote. Oh, Peter. I know Peter Coyote. Yeah, Peter Coyote fucking, fucking narrates every movie you've ever seen. All right, yeah. all right. the answer was Rosebud. Yes. Next question. But Nobody Kata got and I were in Joshua Tree. This is a true story oh, where we airbnb a cactus for two months. <laughs> It was like amazing. All right, nobody got any crazy. points on that one. Hey, 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 hey. But, nobody, but, nobody got any. But hold on, did we get any peyote? <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll, come peyote. on, man. Listen to the man. He's I'll an get Academy you. Award winner. I'll get you peyote. I, I, Charlie Sheen's I, I, probably got plenty of peyote in his fucking uh, I'm, I'm dildo sober, drawer. No, I don't do any of that shit. The you don't do drugs, do Chuck? Bubble gum. Bubble gum. Fucking give it to me. I just fucking shoot that thing right in my arm. Oh yeah, fucking bubble gum, baby. You shoot up bubble gum? Fuck yeah, I got a bunch of these needles left over. What the hell am I going to do with them? Good point. Hey, yeah, uh, he calls the needle Bazooka Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I also do stand-up. <laughs> what hey, was... this guy's a comedian <laughs> like me. Oh, my God, Ray, Ray Romano. Romano. Ray, I'm so such far. a fan. This oh. is crazy. Right, this is crazy to see you guys uh, together for the first time because I know you've only seen each other uh, backstage at... Uh, well, you guys were actually... People don't know this. You guys were both on the stage crew for the movie Cats, starring Jason yeah, Derulo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was, you know, real cats. I got really excited because I like, I like the cats. These guys wearing fake fur. It was weird. Right. It was, it, weird. it was weird because they asked me to handle the catnip, but it was like in quotes. So I was like, hey, 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 okay, I will bring the weed. And they were like, stop feeding these cats weed. And I'm like, you hired me. Now, uh, Christian Bale, I know you're allergic to cats. I, uh, yeah, actually, uh, I'm allergic to cats. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like them. And, you know, I say, when I'm on a set, you know, I'm, I'm very clear about this right away. I go, do not bring cats on my fucking set. I don't want to be a part of this. I've been very, I've been very, very clear about this. I, I like bats. No cats. Well, that's actually Goldblum. That was what you... Uh, didn't yes, you? Bats Not Cats, my new album. That's I right. I play a jazz. <laughs> bats Not Cats, Scats, Dats, a doo doo bob bing a dee dong yeah. My new uh, jazz uh, quartet featuring eight people, never been done before. Um, we sing all about bats and cats and everything. 
What about rats? How come they got left out of the equation? Uh, well, you know, coronavirus is, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, from the bats and cats are what people are adopting during the pandemic. So cats and bats, mm-hmm, <laughs> topical and it's very cool. Ah. All right. We're going to go to our third question and try to get some points back on the board and wrap this shit up. Question number three, and I want to open this up to everybody, uh, particularly uh, I'd like to hear from George Lucas on this one and um, Anthony Bourdain and Dr. Phil. Uh, what was the first feature-length animated movie ever released? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll start with you, uh, Mr. Uh, Lucas. Who, who, okay, uh, you know, I, I, I study a lot of film, and uh, you know, you know, a lot of my background is uh, filmmaking, and uh, um, you know, they even made a, you know, a, a part of the USC named the George uh, Lucas building because I donate so much money, so I should know this. Donate so uh, much what? I should I should I should know this. Uh, no, but what did you uh, donate? I, I donated uh, five hundred uh, million dollars worth of five. What's that? Money. Now I heard a rumor that you donated sperm as well. Uh, well, you know you gotta you gotta spread the force everywhere as much as you can. Jesus you know? Christ, man! You know when you when you don't have enough fans, you gotta make them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's how uh, how I got a lot of blockbuster films. Is, uh, I just uh, I worked at a sper- sperm bank and uh, made sure that uh, it was all Lucas sperm. So there's a there's a reason to uh, to a lot of my success. <laughs> Great. So I think there was an answer in there somewhere. Wh- wh- which uh, feature length animated movie was the first ever to be released? Uh, that would probably be uh, uh, Snow White. Um, who are you again? The Seven Whores. <laughs> No. All right. Well, that's your answer. We'll, we'll we'll come back to that. Well, for a long time, I've traveled all over the world, visiting many cultures, and having a lot to eat and a lot to drink. Yeah, you've made a career out of that. I feel like I'm playing a game called Guess Who I Am. Wait, aren't you dead, by the way? Well, yes, see, I, here's here. Uh, we, we brought, using my uh, holographic technology, we brought back uh, Anthony Bourdain. Holy so he, fucking shit. He's you know, not dead. He's, he's immortalized now, and uh, the only way to get to that state is... Is, uh, uh, is dying. And, I, <laughs> I am a Jedi, and a lot of people don't know that about me. Yeah, but that's how I was able. The force, may the force be with you, was actually something that I used to say in the kitchen right before we eat. It's my version of cheers. Because when you get around the table and you hang out with the people that you love and that you care about in a community that you've grown together from the earth, you want to say, may the force be with you. Now, may the force be with you is something that I've constantly said to myself before I go to bed and when I take a shower uh, with my nanny. And I think that there's so many movies we love and cherish, okay? There's so many foods we love and cherish. And, George, for you, there's so many uh, 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 Ewoks, okay, which are people, too. And this is what people... There's a lot of holiday specials we didn't release yet. Uh, You know, the Ewoks are just... I'm excited for the Passover special. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, Disney uh, now they own the rights. They're, they're, you know. Now, is there a difference between is there a difference between Ewoks and midgets? There's absolutely no difference. Uh, Midgets are less hairy, but um, you know, I don't even know if we can use that term anymore. They prefer not to be called Ewoks. Uh, They (laughs) prefer to be called little people. Well, so look, I I think we've all okay. So, so, uh, Doctor, did you have an answer? Well, uh, I think. Okay, so animated films. The first one I ever saw was uh, Wally's World. Hey, you're a doctor. Can you fix my teeth? Uh, you know, there's. I don't think any doctor except for Pimple Popper that could probably fix. What's I don't happening. have much money. You know, if you just like put throw me into a bar with a bunch of mean. People you know what? I'm gonna pay it. Broken in. Oh. I'm gonna pay it because I feel bad about tanking. Yeah, that's your super generous. Podcast, man. I'm sorry. You did take my podcast. <laughs> this is it. This is the moment I've been waiting it's for. It's the least Fuck you could do. Fuck the Oscars. Fuck everything. And this is what Jeff, I love. I love seeing I love people you. spiral out of control. Buscemi's going through what we're all going through, which is pandemic fever, okay? And there's moments in all of our lives we have to look in the mirror, take your dick out, grab the head of it, look yourself in the eyes and go, don't come, okay, until we'll be right back. And then you come back from commercial, in quotes, come back from commercial, now, Steve, what were you saying about the, the uh, well, I think what Dr. Phil, I think, was trying to say was that there's been a lot of films that have been not nominated that have been animated, and 
Oh, say that ten times fast. Not nominated, and animated. Not, not nominated, nom- nominated. Did not, not been nominated. I laminated. <laughs> I can't do it, man. I just tried. You heard me. So we. So, Mr. Biden, did you? Is it, have you seen any cartoons? Here's the deal. All right, let's Car- go back to Mr. Obama. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. I, I I let Joey watch Switch cartoons every Saturday morning. Yeah. Electronic I put him cars. on, and he loves SpongeBob. Not remote control cars. I'm yeah, talking about cars. <laughs> We're not talking about remote. Base. I'm talking about cartoons on the forward. television. Uh, no, not the <laughs> not not the Lincoln Logs and that I got you. If you elect me as governor of the United States, no, you're already president. You're already president. That I will be the best librarian you've ever seen. No, we don't need a a, a, a universal book. Lady, I have to interject. Could I play Joe Biden in a movie? I mean, I would love to play Joe Biden. This guy just got so. Christopher many Waltz, you played I, Joe Biden. I could get rid of my German accent and I could try it. You know, I could go in there and I could start saying nonsensical things and people would vote for me. All right, the correct answer is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. I think who got that? Did De Niro get that right? I didn't even say anything. What the fuck's wrong with I you? Think what it the was, fuck kind of show is this? I think it was George what Lucas. What the fuck is wrong oh, with you people? <laughs> yeah, I think it was Lucas. Lucas said something about the Ewoks. I, I, I said Snow White and the Seven Whores. Oh, that's, that's right. You I, did I say that. By, Hi there. Ryan yeah, Reynolds yeah. here. Just oh, wanted to... Oh, yeah, Ryan Reynolds. Hi. I'm also running the valet downstairs, and I have a Good 98 you. Elantra that's blocking one of the cars, so I was just wondering if I'm was... sincerely apologize. That's mine. That's my car. I, you know, well, I, just I, move I, it to your own convenience, because right now we've got to beat the traffic. I, I, I thought it was, a, it was a parking zone. It's a loading Oh, no, zone. no, no. I'm such what, what, a fan, Sir Ian McKellen. Uh, don't worry about it. If you could just give me the keys, okay. I can certainly so, move so the car so it's myself. All right. <laughs> I can give you a tip. I'll, here's it's a hundred dollars. Just let, let wow. it Wow, I didn't think my day was going to start up again. A hundred dollars. It's an old laundry. That's unbelievable. Mr. McKellen, don't you do the uh, commercials for Hyundai? That's right. Buy the new Hyundai because I fucking told you so. Wow. They never aired that commercial, by the way, but it's great that you know that term. Thank you. Well, I'm going to go I've got a, buy a I've Hyundai got a, right fucking now. I've got a deep uh, respect and knowledge and catalog for unaired car commercials. I know Vince Vaughn used to do the, uh, what was it, the Kia Sorento or the... Well, well, I I did Hyundai Sonata. Oh, that's right. Jeff Bridges did. Was he? But I also did. I did Kia Sorento. You did. Yeah. I said, hey, hey, what the fuck you doing with your life, Kia Sorento? <laughs> that was the whole commercial. <laughs> when you want to ride in a car that's not as bumpy as you'd want it to be, and you want to find peyote real easy, jump into the new Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln thing. Yeah, I said an ADR. I uh, I did Uber. I was like, I should not be driving. That's how high I am. (laughs) Uber. (laughs) And it worked. And Goldblum, you did Lyft. Am I correct? I uh, that's right. If you want to lift your spirits, go to apartments.com. That (laughs) too wasn't aired, but for whatever reason, they still paid me. (laughs) Now, is it true? I know that, um, Louis Black, I know you did. uh, You were doing the McDonald's ba-da-ba-ba. Because now it's the guy... Oh, yes. Oh, they all fucking ask me. They say, Lewis, you're such a nice guy. You do Pixar movies now. Why don't you do McDonald's? But it's fucking bullshit. Yeah, you're real. I prefer Burger King, Taco Bell, and Chipotle because when I eat, I like to shit right away. <laughs> well, I think we've got time for one more question, and then uh, and then it's on to our picks. What flavor of Pop-Tarts does Buddy the Elf use in his spaghetti in the movie Elf? And I would like to uh, try to roll the dice and go back to President Joe Biden and see if he knows what kind of Pop-Tart Buddy the Elf uses in his spaghetti in the movie Elf. Folks, here's the deal. Okay, we're going to go back to Tom Hanks real quick. very important. Well, well, I'm sorry, Mr. I President. Believe. Well, hold uh, on. <laughs> I believe that Buddy. Uh, uh, I think it's... Uh, now, now, hold on. Boys and Quite Barry? frankly, folks... Here's the deal. It's not a joke. Now, I got to say, listen, come on, man. This is sincere. Hey, hey, nobody said it wasn't. Well, yeah, everything you're saying, nobody said yet. Hear me out. We are. You know, we're listening. It's not hyperbole. Nobody said it was. Nobody said that. Quite frankly, folks. Nobody said that. Let me finish. Well, hold on. Nobody said that. You're cutting yourself off. Anyway, folks, hear me out. We're listening. Serious. I feel like I'm being TiVo'd through the speech <laughs> where I keep There's picking it up halfway through. Pop-Tarts, and here's the deal. 
It, it, it's tell, not hyperbole. It, it, no. Well, no, those are real things. Those are real things. People buy them and eat them. They're delicious. What flavor was fucking eaten in spaghetti by Will Ferrell's character in the movie Elf? I like cinnamon pop tarts. That's not a fucking flavor, believe. Mr. President. It's well, cinnamon brown sugar, I believe, is a flavor. Oh, is it really? Well, I I, was, oh. just, I did the commercials for ten years. Oh, you did. Hanks did the pop tart commercial. Absolutely, I played. I played <laughs> Paulie the pop tart. <laughs> What was the dude? Kid? I, I fucking said, went up for that role. I, uh, well, I saw you at the callback. I kept getting pop tarts in in between my teeth, and they're like, "Fuck, this guy's perfect." <laughs> well, you're a can. Of, we, yeah, we were playing Polly the pop tart, and it was like, "Hey, kids, put me in your mouth." Oh, that's First right. Thing I put in the morning. myself in my own mouth. It was crazy. It was when I used you're like to be a cannibal. Really and who was the voice of the uh, the the um, the drizzly uh, the the icing? Like Nicolas Cage, I think, did the strawberry icing, didn't he? Oh, I uh, oh, oh. <laughs> So oh, look, man, I would eat that ice thing up right away, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so look, uh, the best animated that cage rage too, man. These guys fucking <laughs> method acting, dude. So, be, so, so look, best uh, best animated feature is the last category I want to just discuss real quick. We got Onward, Over the Moon, Sean the Sheep movie, Soul, and Wolf Walkers. Do you guys have any picks here? I myself am putting fifty grand on Onward. I fucking love that movie. It was about the dad and the Chris Pratt played like a dad who like was missing an arm or something. His dad, his dad was like a silhouette. I, uh, I believe he was uh, the first. Only the top half of his uh, body was missing. Uh, oh yeah, Cage. Yeah, you. Uh, I, uh, I I I wrote the script. Oh, that's you know. I thought I read that somewhere. You've been writing a lot more animated films. Uh uh uh, uh yes. Uh I said uh uh, uh onward. <laughs> Mr. President. Onward. Christian soldiers. <laughs> Man, you know, they put me in every one of those movies, and then they said, we don't need a voice of God narrating every fucking thing. Mr. Freeman, do you they know what... They still paid me, but... Uh, Mr. Freeman, you know. do you know what a Shaun the Sheep movie, Farmageddon, is about? I think I do. It's about the struggles of the black people and, you know, black sheep. They struggle, too. And it's a representation, a metaphor, if you will about the struggles between white men and black men, white sheep and black sheep. And the Farmageddon that happens is Armageddon, but it's at a farm, so it's funny. Now, I'm sure that Farmageddon can hold no candle to George Lucas's Lucas Film Farm, which is just a one giant CGI. Well, it's a, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like, a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a place that kids can come learn about film by just watching, uh, you know, THX uh, uh, you know that opening, wah, you know that little uh, the wah, that sound of the THX uh, logo that opening. Yeah, we we put that on loop and just uh, you know absorbing that osmosis almost like um, or you know uh, 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 the kids uh, they learn filmmaking. Yeah, it's fucking riveting stuff. Adam Driver, before we close this out, I, I know that there's uh, a couple movies that you have your your eyes set on as far as being. The big winners of the night. There's a, some. Sometimes people just do a, a a clean sweep. I know there was that Japanese film that did it. Uh, Avatar did it, right? Um, Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade should have done it. Uh, is there any film or 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 performance that sticks out to you, Adam Driver? That you go, boy, I hope they, I hope they have a special night. Um, I would say Judas and the Black Messiah. Mr. President. Is there a film that you're looking forward to seeing holding up that big silver dildo? Here's the deal. I believe our country's in a lot of a lot of turmoil. Dildos are the answer. Oh God. People don't want to admit that. But they are. Well, because it if we stick one up there, it's debatable. we're gonna leave one up there. We're not gonna pull it out. We're gonna leave it in there. Uh, Joe, if I may, uh, you're you're doing great, pal. But we got to wrap this up if we want to get to Denny's, uh, get that early bird special. Ooh, Denny's. I love Denny's. I'll right. tell you why. You can order everything on the kids' menu. It'll fill you up, fill you up as much as you eat <laughs> on the adult menu. But you pay half the price. They don't know that. They don't know that. What do you get on the kids' menu that's so de delectable? I get pancakes. I always <laughs> pancakes. He gets them with a smiley. He loves a smiley. They put a little... Uh, a little syrup smile for you? Than, than waking up and see a beautiful smile. 
If the waitress isn't smiling, the pancakes are. <laughs> and that's the difference that Denny's does that nobody else will. Five ninety nine. are you out of your mind? Any more, and it's a chore, and I believe it. <laughs> well, look, I think we covered a lot. I don't know what movies we covered, who's going to win. <laughs> I think that the... the Mr. The, Reynolds? I think, if I may, the, uh, the audience is the big winner this year. That America is the big winner this year. I couldn't agree more. Movies are back. Movies are back. And Morgan Freeman, you've always said what about movies? Movies are a waste of fucking time. Go read a book, you <laughs> motherfucker. I mean, hey, look at the intelligence levels of all our children now. They're suffering. They're on par with penguins. Well, let's see if we can close this out a little stronger. Vince Vaughn, I know you're uh, a big a fan of movies as you are. As if I can ask everybody to take a knee right now. Sure. I'm going to have a conversation with everybody in this room right Lower now. Lower your heads. Raise a glass. Okay. Now, My right now. are real bad. Is it okay if I stand? Yeah, Ray, you can do whatever you want, Ray. You're, yeah, you, you're at your own house. You do what you do want. Do you have a hammock? I'll, I'll lie on the floor. My therapist said I shouldn't, I shouldn't move, so I'm going to stay here. I, I think Were you showing get... the movie rights to that story? Can I get an, <laughs> Can I get an audition? <laughs> I'm going to say right now that we've come together a lot in this in this podcast in particular. Sure. But as a country and as an energy and as a people since yep. the beginning of time. I feel it. And I think that if we can just hold, pull our hands together and I want everybody to put their hand in right now and just touch each other right now. Let's keep the Fuck six yeah. feet apart. Let's just touch each other right now. Let's Morgan grip. Freeman's hands really sweaty, guys. Charlie, well, Charlie, put something in that's that's uh, above the waist. Yeah. Hey, 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 keep the pants on, Charlie. Chucky, Chuck. Chucky boy. Can we call you oh. Chuck? Yeah. Okay. Chuck, call me Chuck because I like to fuck. <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. I want everybody. Vince, break it down for us. I want everybody to just think of their their mothers and their fathers. And where they came from, and where we all came oh, from as yes. a people. My mother, very attractive, gave birth to me. I remember coming out of that canal, looking back, going, "Ooh, too bad you're taken," you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oedipus wasn't wrong. Oedipus wasn't wrong. <laughs> Vince, what were you saying? I was saying. <laughs> Everyone put your fucking hand in on three. I want you to yell, Kia Sorrento. One, two, three. Kia Sorrento. Kia Sorrento. Kia Sorrento. <laughs> Kia Sorrento. Nobody else fucking did it. No, I did. Just three of us did it. No, I did it too. No, no, we were no, trying no. to say it at the Just same time. That's us. the thing. It's like everyone had to speak at a different time. I couldn't say it because I have a Hyundai Sonata. I have a different contract, man. Well, and I don't even drive. I take a hot air balloon to most places. But that's just because, you know, when you get to a certain tax bracket, you can afford bigger and better things. And I don't, you know, flying is better than driving. But, you know, I've always said that. Fly, you fools. Well, I did an Iron Man 1 and 2. We didn't do a third one. What's that? Fly, you fools. With American Airlines. Are you the voice of American Airlines? I was the voice of... Hell, hell. Wait, Miss... Wait. Mr. President, weren't you the voice of Delta Airlines? Of Spirit Airlines. Oh no, Mr. Obama! I know you were of of, of spirit. Uh, no, I, I, I was uh, I was definitely American. You uh, fly, uh, <laughs> fly across our great United States. <laughs> Make sure that you spread uh -oh. democracy. I okay. think he was the voice of Nyquil. <laughs> well, you know the voice of Nyquil. We all know who that was. That was, uh, you know, that was Christian Bale. <laughs> Get better and go to sleep, you cunt! <laughs> From it, oh yeah, I missed that fucking audition too. It was my go, go to sleep, you fucking assholes. But they give it to Bale because he <laughs> actually sounds fucking angry. I sound silly angry, big fucking bullshit. Yeah, but you've had a good career, Lewis Black. You know, you've been one of those guys that sticks around, that hangs around, that keeps getting his foot in the door. Sometimes it gets oh, stuck. I get my foot in the door, then they fucking stomp on it, because they're all fucking assholes. <laughs> we didn't get to ask Steve Martin any questions, and I know, Mr. Martin, you actually are one of the uh, the first Oscar hosts. It's okay. I've just been here tuning my banjo. But you, <laughs> you, 
actually hosted the Oscars almost more than anybody uh, has ever. You uh, did it a lot. I host the Oscars. <laughs> All right. You know what? We're all starting to run out of steam. <laughs> but I do want to thank all my guests. Ms. Matthew McConaughey, Anthony Hopkins, Steve Buscemi, Goldblum, De Niro, Morgan Freeman, Ian McKellen, Steve Martin, Ray Romano. We didn't get to hear from Colin Firth, but, you know, I think... Uh, Colin Firth is uh, he's indisposed at this moment because he sounds a little too much like me, Anthony Hopkins, <laughs> and I didn't want any confusion on the air. Well, we only want one Brit per podcast, and that's actually what was Jeff Bridges' uh, biggest complaint about uh, Susan Boyle's podcast. I, I panned it. <laughs> not a fan, man. Not a... <laughs> not a fan, man. Big thanks to Jeff Bridges and Ryan Reynolds and uh, Adam Driver uh, 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 Bourdain. Thanks for coming back. George Lucas, thanks for bringing back Anthony Bourdain. That was a special treat. Uh, uh, you know, at any time you guys need anything... Uh, the only thing I can't do is speed up our president. So that's you know that's the next thing I'm working on. Well, great. It's always uh, it's great to have projects. Uh, I know uh, Alex Jones. I know you're working on quite a few things right now. I, I I'm, I'm I'm always working on uh, I'm always working on a couple things right now. Part of it is uh, you know uh, developing a uh, Joe Rogan and I Joe Rogan and I are, are, are developing uh, something on the moon on the moon out there. Yeah, yeah I heard uh, you're trying to get Nicholas Cage to be the house MC at Joe Rogan's comedy club. Nick, is that right? I didn't even know you were doing stand up. Uh, uh, it, it's uh, uh, absolutely uh, true. Uh, knock knock. Who's there? Uh, me, but I'm gone. Oh, in 60 seconds. See, that's funny. I'd pay for that. I'd pay top dollar for that. Mr. President, when you can get back fully vaxxed and waxed outside of the public, <laughs> would you go see Nicolas Cage do stand-up with me? My treat. Here's the deal. God damn it. Our country <laughs> has a lot of other priorities. Like what? The biggest priority is making sure that they watch the Academy Awards. There it is. Not just with open eyes, but open ears and minds and hearts. And if Ma Rainey's b Big Black Bottom doesn't win. I don't think that was the title, Joe. Ma Rainey's Big Black Bottom. Nope, still not it. I'm pretty uh, sure. Uh, well, I got it I got it on Epics. It was a great film. Ma uh, Rainey's Big Black Bottom. I think you're talking about I'm the sure one that you downloaded thing. at the hotel. Yeah, you might be Chad, talking about Chad your... Chadwick Hose man. He had a big old... No, that old was on X-Hamster. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the deal. I believe that Epics hold some of the greatest films. You're not wrong about that. I believe that uh, we're uh, silent investors, Joe. <laughs> here's the deal. Mr. President... Russia, he... No, here's the Russia's deal. not going back to the International Space Station. I'll tell you why. <laughs> they don't believe in democracy. Navalny is dying right now. Who? He's dying in prison. Navalny, I, I, the, the Russian guy who's not Putin, <laughs> dying. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta make sure our country watches the Academy Awards. You done too? Not just because, not just because of a, the shiny, shiny thing that they give, but because it's all what America's about. Go Tigers. <laughs> Go Bayside Tigers. Shout out to AC Slater, Mario Lopez. I'll see you in hell. <laughs> and Gally Kapowski. So look, this was a blast. Uh, congrats to all the nominees, and uh, I know we'll be watching. And shout out to everybody who's got a chance to win a, a golden statue. Because when it all is said and done, that's what you'll remember most about your life. Um, guys, thanks for being here. Best of luck, and uh, we'll see you in hell. Good night, everybody. Do we have outro music or something? I have two. Outro music? Academy Awards. <laughs> Joe, you want to take us out with some smooth jazz? Joe? This is about as smooth as the show can get. Look at Joe. Working hard now. He's like, fuck, this show is supposed to be over. I'm going to go back to sleep. Now he's calling on me to play some music. Oh, I'll play it now. Mm-hmm. You heard it for a second, but Morgan Freeman's talking, so I'm going to let him keep talking instead of letting me play the jazz music. This asshole's taking over. Thanks, Morgan. there was a gap. You could have played some music, but you didn't. <laughs> there we go. Now we can smoothly end the show. There it is.
Morgan, you want to just give us a real nice phone sex operator closing here? Pretend I'm a sweet, sweet, horny 30-year-old woman calling to get some pleasure. You're all wrong, aren't you? You're by yourself in that apartment that you can barely afford. You've got no food in that fridge, 12 kids that you're supporting, and three jobs that you can work on but you'll never get to because you're stuck. The cockroach traps have glued you to the floor, and you're not moving. But I'm moving closer to you. My big, hard, sweaty body dripping over you because you have no AC. Damn, this, this apartment is absolute shit. But with my money and your body, maybe we can change that. Just let's not involve any of your kids. Mm-hmm. I come closer. <laughs> But you smell funky, because you can't afford to take a shower. I'm leaving, but I'm taking the check that your boss just sent to you to pay for your rent. In fact, it would have saved you and your life. But I'm an asshole, and I need some money, too. See you later, alligator. That was amazing. All right. That's good. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome. That was a blast. Mmm, Zoa. Thanks, Rock. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of uh, stuff to uh, to think about and chew on, huh? Because that's what life's all about, chewing on the good stuff. Nobody said that. Maybe Denzel did. Maybe Tom Hanks did. Maybe they said it together in Philadelphia. The point is... Click subscribe right here on the ALN logo so you can get more episodes and stay up to date when new content drops, highlights, animations, clips. It's all here for you, baby. I'll see you next time. Oop, I don't know how to blink.